Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, Sustaining the Gaze. In 1932, philosopher-poet Walter Benjamin realized the important moment of life is how things withstand the gaze. And he was a bit high on some medicinal cures at the time of that self-discovery. But his question is valid and remains a standard pillar in modern philosophy and in living a current life. Now, we all know an apple is an apple. But beyond that common understanding of the shared experience of an apple, eating, viewing, defining the apple, what is an apple, really? Is an apple bits of stars? Microdust particles that come together to form something new and absolutely delicious? Or is an apple an apple only because we just agree that thing over there that we call an apple is really, well, an apple? In the 1960s anthem Woodstock, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young sang this from Joni Mitchell's famous and melodious lyric. And are we any of that? What have we become from our space dust? Are we just the ashes of the universe? Or are we of every being that has ever been? The us of us. Each time we look to define ourselves as unique in a mirror, do we still begin to recognize the self staring back at us? In religion, we are often programmed to live a good life because God is watching and God knows all. And we pit his fear, his punishing gaze against us in the fear that uh, he will become violent and place a hand upon us in sort of retribution. Can you withstand the gaze of God upon you? Well, to answer that thought, we need to confirm a structure of fear and our panels of disbelief. We have to come to terms with belief and faith in knowing. Is there this noble, cruel, effervescent, notorious virtue Virtuous thing looking into us, into our souls, and past us, seeking the beyond of us to judge us as living a moral life or not. Well, now let's travel on beyond those common notions of knowing in this Human Meme podcast. Let's take the next step of due diligence in living this human life. We gaze. We are gazed upon. But can we sustain that gaze? It is not enough to just sit and ponder. We must also know, know, understand, reckon with, recoil against we always want to know. We always need an excuse. We forever must find a reason. And we do not get there to sustaining the gaze by simply looking at our hand all day and wondering about apples and about the universes held therein. We have to actively think and ponder. 
Never blinking, never knowing, always focused, always yearning, always reevaluating what we think we already know. And sustaining a gaze is tiring. We have to maintain the gaze even when the object of our thought is not among us or about us. We are forced to multitask and to know and to remember. So how do we sustain our gaze? And what is worthy of this impulse? Some would argue we should start with ourselves, then the things that are important to us, and then the things that inspire us, and so on. But not many of us want to spend a lot of time sustaining our gaze on unpleasant things, even though we should. We don't want to know things that haunt and frighten us. I wonder if we should spend more time sustaining our gaze, focusing our thought, focusing on the small things that tend to go unnoticed, all in order to find relevance by relationship. The forgotten and the ignored are certainly there, still there, and vibrant, even though they may not be in the forefront of the memory of the masses. And that, my human mean friend, is where an advantage can be cleaved by the observer, the gazer, you in sustaining relevance to what has been forgotten or forbidden. Cultures, languages, and even people begin to fade away and wither because of inattention and disabuse. If you want something to disappear, you simply stop giving it your energy and your time and your sustaining gaze. And quickly... What was once worthwhile and important is now nothing and unsublime. To resurrect something with your gaze, and a gaze is more about thought-centering and actually seeing, you think on it, to know it as well as you know your own hand and your favorite apple. And in that process of resustaining importance, you begin to give life to a series of moments that, once again, begin to matter. You can gaze to reanimate anything. So let's take an author like Mari Sandoz. She's infinitely good and famous, and she was a Nebraska writer, Famous last name, excellent books. Dead in 1966. And few people today know Mari Sandoz. Kids born and bred in Nebraska today don't know about Mari Sandoz, and I admit a few, if you're lucky, can name a Willa Cather book or two. And so, to reanimate her, Mari Sandoz, within you, you would read her books. You would become her mind, and you would inhabit her spirit and her soul. And that's how you should read any book. You are not the author. You are the participant. You are the willing, interactive observer. You are the one with the sustaining gaze. And as you begin to become one in the world of Mari Sandoz, you will want to sustain this momentum by sharing and teaching and telling others what you learned. And so your gaze is turned inward, outward, and back inside again. And these are not easy turns into immortality. They are tasks that will 
toll you. The toll bells for you. And you must answer every pull of the hemp and know every fray in the braid and navigate every cut in the Gordian knot that binds you into every new revelation of the past. And yes, there are people who will try to stop you, who will want to interfere with your gaze. Mari Sandos is not worth knowing. Why? you ask. Well, because Mari Sandos is regional and forgotten and old and irrelevant since 1966. And there are others more worthy of your limited attention. And that's when you thank them for their thoughts. And you continue on with your sustained gaze. Because you are reanimating what must be experienced by other eager minds. If they are willing to travel into the future by reaching into their past with you. And so you have now become, in this process, the all-knowing. You have become the one who now gazes upon and is no longer gazed against. And all of this happened only because you persisted in determining relevance. You are now your own God. You are now a cogent force. You are now a willing judge of all your tomorrows. You are now the immortal who promises life in the exchange of the fortune of knowing. Against the wisdom of denial, of the great threat and the danger of human consequence. And you know this. Through an ongoing belief in maintaining a half-open eye. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme.